Howdy peeps. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, welcome back to the next part of the build series of the SU-76. Uh, today we're on to the actual airbrushing of the main colours on the hull and the tracks, wheels, all the various little bits. As you'll notice I've had a little move around. I've shifted the camera over to the side. Hopefully to give A, a better view of what I'm doing and B to, to try and keep the excess noise from the airbrush and from the compressor down a little as well. I'm afraid there's not a lot I can do about that. If it is noisy you may just have to turn the volume down I'm afraid. Um, it's one of these things. I've also got windows and doors open and stuff because I don't have a spray booth and just to get a bit of ventilation going. It's been a while since I actually put the primer on the kit and I'll show you where we're up to right now. Lose the box top. So as we can see I've primed everything I'll move over here so you can actually see it. Ooh, somewhere around there. I've primed it all in black with the UMP black primer. That one there. And sometimes what I'll do is I will put run either the grey grey primer down the sides as well and a white primer over the top just to get more tonal variance throughout the kit uh, especially if it's a big tank that's all one colour um, it's been fairly small and it's broken up there's quite a lot of detail pieces on there as well so I've not done it yet if once I've sprayed the main colours down or the main colour being the green if I decide that I think it needs a bit more variance I can soon come back with the base colour lightened with a few drops of Tamiya buff and just give it that so we have a slight variance you know, pick out high points uh, where where I think it would have faded naturally now as I say as, as well as the hull I've also primed the gun all the wheels, sprockets and the little bits and the tracks but we'll leave those to one side for a bit because they're going to be obviously painted a different colour so let's get down to it shall we? Ooh, just uh, itch my nose a bit. Let's pull that out straight, it's all stuck down. So we're going to use the Tamiya Olive Green for this, which is the XF59. We'll give it a good shake first. I would usually use a, an actual Russian Green. Um, usually the Vallejo 4BO or the is it the AK I've got no the ammo MIG um, same bottles <laughs> um, but I thought for this one I'll just show with the Tamiya paint and thinning it as well it's a little extra to show if I can get the lid off the bottle there we go I really should have checked that first shouldn't I just in case it welded itself shut now a lot of people do mix their paints just by eye or by guesswork. I'm a drop counter in that I use a pipette so I know exactly where my ratios are. Um, actually as a slight aside I was going to use the Tamiya olive, uh, not the Tamiya, the Vallejo olive green to paint this but um, my bottle seems to have got contaminated somewhere and it just ended up with that big block of solid urethane rubber in the bottom of it so as you can see I'll cut it open <laughs> it's literally solid urethane rubber it does happen sometimes with Vallejo paints but these things are sent to try us so make sure the pipette's got nothing in it and I reckon about 30 drops of paint eh, maybe 25 we'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's go with a little extra. So that's 30 drops of paint in there. Get rid of the excess. Now I have two pots of, I say water. Um, one is for cleaning my brushes out. 
which is clean water ish and the other one is a pot I use for when I'm cleaning out the pipette of whatever nastiness might happen to be in there so we don't contaminate our thinner it's the worst thing we, well, last thing we want is thinner that's Change, a change to a funky colour and this is already slightly orangey for some reason um, that might just be my eyes though so we're using Mr Colour Leveling Thinner for this and I would recommend with as it's a lack of thinner I would definitely recommend either having a spray booth plenty of ventilation wearing a mask I'm gonna, I would normally wear a mask but I'm going to be a naughty boy today and not so you can actually hear me speak um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there we go. We have a 50 50 mix. So 30 drops each of the paint and the thinner. I will actually just crack my window open a little more just to make sure I have plenty of ventilation to excuse any outside noises but I'll soon get drowned out by an airbrush and it's time to mix the paint you can use your badger paint stirrer or whatever small quantities like this I normally just use a cocktail stick and give it a good swish around there we go that'll do wipe it off on my piece of kitchen paper and grab the airbrush disentangle it from the various lines oh. yeah that's working good 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 make sure it's empty needles clean ish and literally pour the paint straight into the paint cup So for paint mixing I am just using a, a medicine cup, I use those or tattoo ink cups most of the time. You can use these disposable shot glasses but if you're using lacquer thinners or lacquer paints, any of the hotter paints at least, be careful because they can eat through the plastic. And I have woken up in the morning to find a big pool of black black oil wash all over the bench which wasn't particularly pleasant to clean up anyway let's just blow some of the excess dust and crud out of the way check the airbrush is spraying properly yep and we start I always start on the bottom just yeah, it let, lets you know how the airbrush is behaving whether it needs a clean or anything it also means it gets dry so you can then put it down on a dry surface and with the levelling thinner it will dry very quickly so we're not looking to do anything spectacular here airbrush wise we just making sure the whole thing is green Try not to spray our hands if we can help it. Again, yes, I do have a box full of the rubber gloves, the little nitrile gloves, which I could wear, but I always seem to forget. Not to worry, it's, it's not going to kill me getting a bit of paint on my hands. You know, we've all had primer fun in the past, so. making sure we get every surface and there goes a 
as I say, you see the uh, compressor sounds like a Model T Ford. It is only one of the cheapy S186s and the astute amongst you will have noticed I haven't actually masked anything um, it's a combination of being lazy, forgetting, and knowing that if I aim the airbrush in the right directions, the overspray won't go anywhere near what I've already done by painting on the interior. bits which I can effectively mask off with my hand and I think that is the main hole it looks all green to me. So that's that done. Now it's on to the gun. Which, as you can see, just to make things easier, I've jabbed it onto a big chunk of blue tack. white tack or probably grey, black, grungy, greeny tack by now so and we are out of paint so we'll mix up another ooh, 15 drops maybe we just got the rest of that and those to do I'm usually pretty good at judging it but hey ho these things happen in that pot is pretty nasty. It's going to be a mix of airbrush cleaner, brush thinner, water, lacquer thinner, all sorts. So make sure so we don't drip any. There we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. Enough. Close enough for government work and the girls, well, no, actually I'm not going to say that, because the girl I go out with is actually, actually rather lovely, so I'm not going to use that statement. I'm actually going to be PC for once, wow, I know. These things do happen occasionally. Now, I've actually 
almost caught up with the um, videos for this I've released compared to what I've filmed mainly because I had I say a cold I had a cold and just as I was getting over that I caught another one so there were things I didn't really want to be doing like uh, spraying paint while you've got a respiratory issue is not the best of ideas um, and I just felt fairly pooey and didn't really want to be doing too much of anything at the time so fortunately I had enough videos filmed and back backed up that I could keep things going up on the channel so that'll do that's the gun done as well now this is the top of the gun shield which is can't actually put in until we put the gun in we don't want to put the gun in until we've painted it so there we go now just doing the lap of all the wheels now at this point what some people will do or most probably most sensible people is they'll break out their circle template find which is the correct size circle And pop that on, it's going to be the next size down, and spray through that. Um, I, I'll do that for tanks with lots and lots of wheels, you know, things like Tigers and the like. But with this, I'll quite happily paint the tyres afterwards. It's not a big deal, big issue. Two of them are the idlers. Oh, I've got to remember which ones it was. I think it's that one. No. There's only two of these. I've actually painted, primed the back off, so I've got to find them now. Is that going to be one of them? No. Where are they? Where are they hiding? It's going to be the last two, isn't it? Always is. Now, for me, being uh, lazy is possibly the incorrect term. But the rest of the wheels, once they're mounted on and it's on the tracks, they're not going to be visible. Because, um, let's be honest, you don't pick your model up very well very often and look at the underside of it. So, I don't bother generally painting the backs of the wheels. However, in this case of the two idlers, the insides are visible on them, so I will paint the inside of those. Literally just like that. By the time these are done, you can then flip over the sprockets and paint the other side of those. As both sides of those are also visible. And that is all our green painted. So all I've got to do now, I will just double check. Mm, a little more down there. But yeah, looks as though I've got everything. So I'll just lose the excess green paint in my Spray off. But most people would have a um, a pot or something like that, which is probably what I should be doing. But I'm bone idle. And my bench is a table, so I just spray it on the table. Then now, quick.
quickly clean out the airbrush. I'll just give it a quick back flush with water. Just to get any get the worst of any nasties out. Spray the X. Spray the worst of the water out under the bench. Grab my preferred ultimate airbrush cleaner. Squirt a little bit in the cup. Alright. Not a huge amount if you can see. I'll bring it up nice and close. And we just grab a cotton wool bud and degunk the inside the cup. At this point, I will say I am no airbrush expert. Um, but what I can say is, generally speaking, if most people, if they have an airbrush problem, it's usually dirty somewhere inside. Um, it's it can be as something as simple and as small as a tiny little bit of needle in a painting nozzle, which will cause all sorts of problems. It's a completely gunked up. Um, there we go. That's clean. So now we're on to the tracks. So we'll move the green painted bits out of the way so we avoid overspray, and we'll grab a another little pot and as it's happening to sit there burnt iron that sounds a good enough colour for tracks doesn't it uh, this is just one of the Mr Hobby Aqueous but we'll thin it the same way with the levelling thinner turn it around just get the logo in shot um, and again we won't need a huge amount of this I wouldn't have thought but this can be where weird things happen with certain paints if you thin with uh, cellulose or lacquer thinner and then you get them in contact with water they do some really strange things and the, you, you might see with this it will probably turn to absolute snot Right, so one, two, three, four, so fifteen drops of that. No, we're okay, it's safe. As you can see, you. Yeah. Just making sure we get as much of the gunk out of the syringe, syringe um, pipette as possible before we start dunking it in our thinner. I'll actually give it a wipe down on a rag that's to hand, i.e., my t shirt, and following exactly the same principle as we did with the Tamiya paint. This is really not a huge difference between the two types of paint. There we are. Yeah. And, oh, where do where do I mixing stick go? Ah, we'll use that one. Smeg it. Stirry, 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 stirry. Also, metallic paints are fairly notorious for clogging airbrushes. Um, it's generally just due to the size of the pigments. Just to get the metallicness, they've got, um, usually, I believe, anyway, I'm no, no expert as I say, usually I think it's. Uh, well, technically aluminium filings, um, obviously very, very small ones, but 
Sometimes they can get jammed up and clog up inside. Certain paints are worse for it than others. This one shouldn't be too bad. So again, just have a quick practice. Let's check it's coming through. And start blowing it on the tracks. Again, we're not looking for anything spectacular or just a nice even coat without it running. As you, you, you probably can't see, but I'm hardly pulling the trigger back. I'm not. If I went the full trigger pull on these, it would probably empty the colour cup in about 10 to 5 seconds flat. Dry before we flip it over and do the other side and the inside. And before you wonder, yes, I have forgotten to clean my hands in the past and gone shopping with all sorts of random colours sprayed on my fingers. This one's fairly dry so we can flip it over and do the other side. all done on both sides of that. Right, so there we go. And how are we doing? We're getting on to the half an hour mark, which is pretty good. So, I'll just clean my airbrush out again, taking a bit more time and attention over it this time because of the metallic paint, as I said we will get a lot of metallic pigment come out of it, and well, it looks like a hair, whether, whether that came from me or the neighbour's cat is another matter. So you will not damage your airbrush back flushing it like this. It's, it's a fallacy that you'll destroy the seals. Um, I mean, yes, if your seals are on the way out, like they actually are in this probably, you can blow paint back up into the body of the airbrush, but yeah, it's not going to be a lot. And when it gums up, you just clean it out and get back to painting again. It's, as I say, it's not that tricky to clean out an airbrush. If it's not working, clean it. If it still doesn't work, clean it again. If in doubt, strip it completely down. Give it a good old douse with cellulose thinners specifically the needle and the nozzle that's where the majority of the problem has come from pop a bit more cleaner in there just to check we've got all the metallic out yeah near enough we'll just spray that through and job done I could pull the needle and clean that as well but I know it's fairly clean because they've been spraying with lacquer. Now, you will probably have noticed me 
getting a cocktail stick and or cotton wool bud and jamming it in the end. No, when I am, I'm pulling the trigger back so the needle is out of the way. Don't jab it in there with the needle, <laughs> needle proud because you will bend the needle. And yeah, let's say pop the end cap off and that's all clean in there. Ready for another day's spraying. So, what's likely to be in the next segment? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's see, probably popping the decals on the main hull of the tank, which I think is only three or four. And no, I won't be uh, gloss coating it first. I will gloss coat it after I've decaled it, but not beforehand, as I say, there's only a couple, I think. There'll be those, painting the tyres, which I'll probably do a couple on camera and the rest off camera, and then starting to pick out the detail parts on the exterior of the vehicle. So the Pioneer tools, the tow rope, the exhausts, anything else that needs to be painted different colours, really. So... I hope the sound hasn't been too much of an issue in this section and um, I shall see you next time hopefully. Have fun, enjoy your modelling, rock on, peace out, bye bye.